everybody, my name's Mark. Welcome to 2000 Hours of Banjo. Today I wanted to do a sequel video or a follow-up video to a video I did the other week. That was the one where I said a chart helped me survive the first year of practicing or learning banjo without giving up. The whole premise there was that this chart showed me that it's going to take years before I get any good. So if I'm making tons of mistakes, not to, not to worry about it, not to get my expectations too high. And with the internet research that I did, having overly high exp expectations and not meeting them is the number one reason why people end up quitting learning a new instrument. Now, there are plenty of other reasons why people quit their instrument or quit learning their instrument. And I'm gonna talk about the second reason, which is frustration or experiencing frustration. So today what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over the tips and tricks that I use in order to help reduce frustration during a practice session. Uh, hopefully you can use them. If you have some yourself that I don't cover, please put them in the comments below so we can all share and we can all reduce the frustration that we experience during a practice session. Now, one caveat. The goal here is not to get rid of all the frustration in a practice session. A, I don't necessarily think that's possible. And B, I don't know if it's necessarily that good. I think some frustration can be a good thing is what I'm saying. And I say that because I had an instructor a long time ago that used to say, if you're not frustrated, you're not learning. Now, I think he's equating, or I took it to equate challenge frustration and challenge being the same thing, that if you're not challenging yourself in a practice, then you're not progressing. If you imagine yourself having a practice where you felt no challenge whatsoever, did that improve your skill level? So if we equate challenge with frustration, if we have a little bit of frustration, that could be a good thing because that could be pushing our progress, pushing our skill level. So not necessarily a bad thing. However, that said, if you imagine each one of us probably has a frustration threshold that we are trying not to exceed. So if we work through our practice session, we safely build up a sense of challenge or frustration, and then we finish our practice without exceeding our frustration threshold, that's good. If we do exceed our frustration threshold, then we rage quit and that's bad. Now, the idea of a frustration threshold is something I'm just kind of making up on the spot, but at least with me, I can tell from day to day that my frustration level or threshold fluctuates. And that may be the case for you, maybe it's not, I don't know, but certainly on some days, uh, I can tolerate a little bit more challenge and other days, ah, I don't want to test it too much because uh, maybe my baseline frustration level is already pretty high from say a bad day's work. I'm gonna get into that a little, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go ahead and grab my list and we'll get through my tips on how I deal with frustration. Uh, number 12 is probably too much information here, but I go to the bathroom. If my bladder is full, I'm gonna go empty it before practice because that pressure in my stomach or in my belly, or in my bladder obviously, um, is gonna to be too distracting and add to frustration. Number 11, I check my fingernails and after too long I clip them. Um, it's really not that big of a deal to figure out halfway through practice if your fingernails are too long and go clip them. But for me what was happening is it was throwing my confidence off and I was getting frustrated and then I was realizing it was my fingernails. I'd go resolve it, go clip them, come back and finish practice. But I had built up that frustration and why do that? Just check your fingernails before practice, clip them if necessary, and you don't even have to deal with it during practice. Number 10, start slow and simple. Um, the last memory you have of playing your instrument is going to be from the end of your last practice after you've warmed up, which means likely uh, you finished on a good note and you were going pretty good. Maybe you were playing pretty fast or you were tackling some pretty difficult or tricky material cleanly. That's not gonna be the case when you start your practice the next time you practice. So keep that in mind. You do have to warm up. You're going to be cold and you can't jump into practice right where you left off. 
and it can take 5, 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes depending on the day. So start slow, start with easy material, get some success right off and it'll set the tone for the rest of your practice. Uh, number nine, don't practice if you're already in a bad mood. Again, if that frustration baseline is already bumping up against your threshold, uh, maybe watch some cartoons, <laughs> take a nap. I don't know, practice may not be ideal in that moment. If it's more tolerable, however, uh, and if you're like me, practice can actually put you in a good mood, then go ahead and jump in and start practice. But again, I would warn you to use some, uh, start with some easier material or start at a slower pace, build that success and ease your way into harder material or faster beats per minute. Uh, let's see, number eight, relax and get comfortable free of distractions. So if it's cold in the house, throw on a sweater, get comfy. If there's too much distraction in the room, maybe find another quieter place in the house. If it's that's not feasible, maybe find another time of the day when it's quieter and free of distraction. That always helps. Unless, of course, the goal is to challenge yourself with distraction, which I do sometimes. I'll go outside, it'll be windy, it'll be a little cold, or the sun will be in my face, or there's flies out there, or whatever, the do dogs are out running around playing. I will go out and I'll challenge myself to try to play with that distraction, but that's kind of a different thing. That's when I know I'm far from my threshold, my frust frustration threshold, and I'm going to give myself that extra challenge. Number seven, uh, don't work out or do physical chores right before practice. When you work out or you do physical chores around the house or in the garage, you're gonna be building up lactic acid in your muscles, in your arms, in your forearms, in your hands, in your fingers, your shoulder, your neck, all that stuff. And that leads to stiffness and loss of limberness uh, when you're playing. So give yourself plenty of time to rest, drink lots of water to flush that lactic, lactic acid out of your body, and then practice. Me, if I've done, depending on how rigorous the physical effort is that I'm doing, if I've been chopping wood or moving lumber, or taking apart a motorcycle in the garage, I'm gonna give myself a couple of hours before I try to tackle a practice. Um, number six, don't practice after drinking. Uh, I've done this, I took some friends out to go wine tasting and then we got back and I couldn't wait to show them all my cool skills on my banjo and it did not end well. It was, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't pick a string in the proper order to save my life. I ultimately gave up and sent my friend a video of <laughs> how good I could be had I not been drinking. I don't know how the pros do it. I'm not at that skill level where I can drink a lot and then, and then still play fine. Um, all right, number five. Expect less performance if you're sick or tired. So if you're running on lack of sleep or if you've got a head cold, that's impairing. That's going to be impairing to your motor coordination uh, and, and that will show when you try to play. I'm not saying necessarily don't practice because we do want to build that habit of practicing every day. That's how we build our skills. But um, take it easy. Make it a slow day. Uh, or, or just pick easy material. Again, set yourself up for success. Add a little bit of challenge if you can handle it, but um, if, if you're, the, the head cold is already going to be challenge enough. Uh, number four, know that you will have good practices and bad ones. So I, even if you don't have a head cold, even if you haven't been working out, even if you haven't consumed alcohol, you're gonna have bad practice days. I don't know what it is that, that initiates or causes a bad practice day, but you're gonna have good ones and you're gonna have bad ones. It's just like going to the gym. You're gonna have days where you feel really strong in the gym and days where you feel very, very weak in the gym. And any gym instructor or fitness instructor is gonna tell you, you don't wanna just quit and go home on a weekday. You need to be there on those weekdays, just like we, we need to continue even on the bad days. Make it a slow day. And when I say a slow day, just slow the beats per minute for everything that you're playing that day. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet on how 
important slow practice is. So make that a day that you, you do that slow practice um, and, and, and get through that practice. That, that is going to help you progress and build that habit. Plus, the number of times that I've started a, a practice session and I was like, That's, this is gonna be a slow day. This is, this is just a bad practice but it ended up being good. Maybe it's just one of those days that warming up takes 30 minutes rather than five minutes. But after that 30 minutes, you hit that Goldilocks zone and you get another half hour or so of really good practice. So don't give up just because you're having kind of a, a bad start to a practice. Number three, uh, stop and take a break before you rage quit. So let's say you're practicing a, a loop of a couple of measures and you keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. You don't, I, who knows what's going on with your brain, but you cannot ditch that mistake. You're hitting the wrong string or you're dragging a finger on another string or bumping another string uh, next to the one that you're supposed to be fretting. Whatever it is, you keep making the same mistake. Take a quick break, you know? It, the quick break could be moving to some different material it could be putting the banjo down or whatever musical instrument you're learning down, walking away from it, coming back in a couple of minutes, or I, it's surprising, but just stopping, kind of shake out the hands, stretch out the tension in your neck. Maybe you're just building up tension in your arm and your hand and just five to 10 seconds can break that cycle and then you're good again. It's, it's kind of surprising what a small break can do. Uh, and then let's see, number two, focus on the thing that you improved on. So even if you're having a bad practice session, there's liable to be a good thing or two, a good technique that you've actually improved on over the last practice session from uh, either the day before, or the week before. Focus on that, marvel on, yeah, you know what? A lot of it was bad but I did improve here. My timing improved on that particular song or something like that. There's always gonna be at least one or two things that you improved on. And then lastly, blame your equipment. I say this kind of facetiously, but in all honesty, yeah, blame your equipment. If something feels weird or off and you don't know what it is and is causing you to lose confidence a little bit in what you're playing, check your equipment to see if your equipment's good. I don't have a trained ear at this point. However, I'm getting to the point where I can tell something's not sounding right in a song. And I've been stopping and checking the tuning on my strings. And lo and behold, a string will be out of tune, it'll be too sharp or too flat. And that to me is actually kind of amazing that I've reached this level that I can notice when a string is just a half step too sharp or a half step too flat, that, that is, to me, that's actually kind of awesome. And that's a bit of a thrill when I was like, oh my God, I, I was able to detect that a string was out of tune. Um, and also I, I mentioned in a video not too long ago um, for those banjo pickers out there, check your picks. If your picks are slightly off on your finger or if, if you've worn out a thumb pick, now that I know what a worn out thumb pick feels like, that can mean the world during your practice session. If your worn out thumb pick is shifting a little bit, it doesn't take much before you're missing strings and you're losing confidence. You're going, what the heck is going on? Yeah, grab a fresh thumb pick, problem solved. All right, that is all the tips that I have. What was it? It was 13 tips. If, was it 13? 12, 12 tips. Um, if you've tried all those 12 tips and it does not work and you still rage quit, guess what? Congratulations. You're human like the rest of us. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have rage quit before. Uh, there's some YouTube videos of people rage quitting their instrument. There's one, I'll link it below. It's like the angriest guitar player on the internet or something like that. That guy knows how to rage quit something else. Um, I don't bash my equipment like he does. However, I have certainly chucked my finger picks across the room on an occasion or two. So I'm guilty of that. Don't be ashamed. We all do it. Shake it off. Get back in there. Don't quit your instrument because we all do it. It's fine. 
uh, life will go on. And hopefully um, with the tips, these tips or whatever tips that you guys might have, the risk of rage quitting in the future will get less and less. All right, thanks for listening everybody. I've got some practice to do. I will see you next time.